Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Yevamot, we are up to Perek Tetvav, Mishnah Tet, today's Mishnah should be Leilu Nishmad, Neria Ben Svetlana, Ranbai, Eliyahu Ben, Burcha Yisraelov, and Chanabad Miriam, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen, and Leavdi Ben Chaim Nechaim, and the Refua Shenemav, Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa, Betor Shach Ule Yisrael. The Mishnah begins, Nitani ben bin Medina Tayam, if a childless couple went overseas and the wife returned and said, I was granted a child overseas. And she added, however, my child died and then my husband died, which means that her husband died childless and she is bound to his brother for Yibum. Nehmenet, she is believed and is subject to Yibum. Since she was childless when she went overseas, it was presumed that she would be subject to Yibum, and she is believed to say that that status has not changed. Med Bali Vachyach Med Bini, however, if she said my husband died and then my child died, which means that her husband did not die childless and she is exempt from Yibum, although she is believed to say that her husband is dead, in Nane Menet, she is not believed that she is exempt from Yibum. In this case, she is testifying that her status with regard to Yibum has changed, which she is not believed to say. Therefore, she remains subject to Yibum. Nevertheless, we are concerned about her words. And therefore, she must perform Chalitza, but may not perform Yibum. By claiming that she is exempt from Yibum, she effectively declared that she is forbidden to undergo Yibum, therefore she is indeed forbidden to do so. However, since she is presumed to be bound to the Yavam, she may not marry until she performs Chalitza. That is in the Mishnah Tet. Mishnah Yud discusses whether a woman is believed to testify about the death of her Yavam. If a man with no children or brothers went overseas with his wife and the wife returned and said, I was given a Yavam overseas, meaning my mother-in-law who was, who was with us had a son. And she added, however, my husband died and then my Yavam died, which means that she now has no Yavam and is exempt from Yibum. Yivami vachach mbali, or she said, my Yavam died and then my husband died, which also means that she has no Yavam and is exempt from Yibum. It does not matter whether the husband or Yavam died first. In either case, she is exempt from Yibum because she now has no Yavam. Nehemenet, she is believed and may marry anyone. Since she did not have a Yavam when she went overseas, it was presumed that she would be exempt from Yibum and she is believed to say that that status has not changed. Although a woman is usually not believed to say that her Yavam died, as the Mishnah will soon say, since in this case the only way we know that she had a Yavam is because she said so, she is believed to say that the Yavam died. In the next case, she had a Yavam when she went overseas, therefore it was presumed that she would be subject to Yibum. If a woman went overseas with her husband and her only Yavam, and she returned and said, my husband died and then my Yavam died, which means that she is exempt from Yibum, or she said my Yavam died and then my husband died which also means that she is exempt from Yibum although she is believed that her husband died and not in a minute she is not believed that her Yavam died and she may not marry a stranger for if a woman who is known to have a Yavam for if a woman is known to have a Yavam, she is not believed to say my Yavam died so that she may marry with a Yibum or Chalitza. Since a woman often hates her Yavam, she is suspected of lying about his death to avoid becoming bound to him for Yibum. The Mishnah lists other people who are not believed to testify about someone's death. A woman is also not believed to say my sister died so that she may enter the household or marry her sister's husband. As we have learned many times, a man may marry his wife's sister only after his wife has died. Although the sages allowed the leniency of accepting the testimony of a woman about her husband's death, that was only because she would otherwise be forbidden to marry. This woman though can marry someone besides her sister's husband, therefore there is no reason to be lenient about the rules of evidence and she is not believed. 
Then Aish Neman Omar Metachishi Yabem Ishto, and a man is not believed to say, My brother died, so that he may perform even with his brother's wife, because we suspect that he, he might be lying out of a desire for her. As the Raman writes in Yechodi Bum chapter 3, Al Khal 11. Therefore, although we have learned that most people are believed to testify that a man died, that excludes the brother of the dead man who is suspected of lying. Nor is a man believed to say, My wife died, so that he may marry her sister. Since he and his wife's sister can marry other people, there is no reason to be lenient and accept the testimony of a single witness. So therefore, all these matters can be established only by the testimony of two valid witnesses, like in all other matters that concern marital relationships. That is in Abu Taif, today's Mishnah Yomi. Baruch Adonai Amen v'Amen.